Hello, my name is Kelsey and welcome back to my channel. This week has been wonderful for a couple of reasons. First, my channel hit 1,000 subscribers, which you may already know if you follow me on Facebook or Instagram. It's so exciting and I really appreciate all my subscribers and your support for my channel. Second, we're having some really lovely weather in Texas and it finally feels like spring may have arrived. So for this week's episode, I decided to do a spring wreath tutorial slash inspiration for you guys. So let's get started. So when I think of spring, I think fresh and light and delicate. Everything is still kind of bare from the winter, but here and there you have these wonderful blooming trees and flowers. With that in mind, I decided that a minimalist look would be a really good fit for a spring wreath. So I went to Hobby Lobby to pick out my faux florals. I knew I didn't want to get a lot, just a couple of big blooming flowers with maybe one accent color and then some delicate greenery pieces. And this is what I found. I love the big white blooms, and what's great is that each stem has a smaller flower on it as well. I think the pastel peachy pink flowers are marvelous. I almost missed them because they were sort of hidden towards the back, but they make the wreath what it is. And then I got one stem each of this greenery that has the tiny white buds on it, as well as this feathery foliage. The last thing I had to find was some sort of simple, modern, minimalist ring. I didn't want to use a grapevine wreath or one with evergreen foliage because neither of those fit my blueprint for what a spring wreath should look like. So I went searching and found this 19 inch diameter metallic silver ring in the craft section. Other than your florals and wreath base, you'll also need some floral wire, some wire cutters and a glue gun. The first thing I did was to try and get an idea of what I wanted the end product to look like. I played around with the different elements and grouped them in different arrangements until I had a fairly solid idea for my wreath. After that, I used my wire cutters to snip the greenery stems into smaller pieces and cut down my big blooms so that the stems were more manageable. Once everything was broken down and organized into piles, I started putting my wreath together. This point is what I'm using as the top of my wreath. Knowing where the top is will help me arrange everything else accordingly. I'm one of those people who like asymmetrical decor, especially on a minimalist modern wreath, so all my foliage will be on the left side of the ring and most of the right side will be bare. I'm attaching the pastel peachy pink flowers first. I want their long stems to curve around the diameter of the ring and give the wreath some wild whimsy. I'm using the floral wire to attach the stems to the steel ring securely. I know that my big blooms and other greenery will hide the wire, so I'm not concerned about that, but I do want to make sure the wind won't dislodge the flowers and blow them away. If I were using a grapevine wreath, I probably wouldn't even bother with the floral wire because the glue gun and the tangle of vines would be enough to hold the faux florals in place. But with the steel ring and these first flowers, there's not much surface area for the glue to adhere to, so the wire becomes necessary. Next, I'm attaching the big blooming flowers. These are relatively heavy and there's still not a lot of foliage to stick them to, so I'm going to securely wire these in place. You can see how the large blooms completely hide the floral wire from view. Next up, the smaller bonus blooms. I'm going to use these around the larger flowers to hide any gaps in the petals. I also think the design looks better when you have similar looking flowers, but they aren't the same dimension. This gives depth and interest to the wreath rather than making it look one-dimensional and heavy-handed. The smaller flowers help make the larger blooms look like they grew there naturally rather than that they were stuck into place. After that, I'm attaching the greenery with the tiny white buds on it. I'm getting to the point now where I don't have to use the wire, but I can use the glue gun instead. There's enough foliage for the stems to stick to, and the greenery is lighter and therefore doesn't need to be as securely attached. In some cases, I will still use the wire to make sure the stem is placed exactly where I want it. But using the glue gun is much easier and less work at this point. Last but not least are these tiny pieces of feathery greenery. I definitely don't need to use the wire for any of these. They're so light and delicate and there's plenty of other foliage to attach them to. I'm just placing them here and there among the other floral pieces to fill out the wreath a little bit and add that last touch of interest and dimension. It's always a good idea to hold your wreath up every now and again to see how it's going to look when it's hanging up. Check to make sure that it looks good to you and that there aren't any weird gaps in the foliage or stems that stick out in a funny direction. Once you're happy with any adjustments you've made, tie a piece of ribbon or twine around the top of your wreath and hang it from your door. Then take a couple of steps back and admire your beautiful entryway. I love how my wreath turned out. I love how fresh and delicate and spring-like it looks. I love the welcoming atmosphere it gives to our front door. I love how the bare metallic ring looks in contrast to the pale blooming flowers. I love the peachy pink flowers and how some of the blooms are still just buds on the stem. I love how the peach color is almost reflected in the center of my big blooms. 
I love the delicate feathery greenery with the almost white edges and the tiny white flowers and how they match my white ribbon. This is exactly how I imagined my spring wreath would look and I'm completely happy with the result. I hope you guys enjoyed this video and that it inspires your spring decorating. I've done a wreath for every season except summer now and you can watch those other tutorials by clicking here. Easter is just around the corner so if you'd like some egg decorating inspiration you can check out this video. Don't forget to subscribe and as always thanks to everybody out there watching and supporting my channel and cheers for now.